environment was just filled with smoke. <laughs> I think everyone got high. <laughs> it was amazing. I couldn't tell if it was dust or weed or both. <laughs> I think I think it was. Yeah. It's like, do you guys get like get that every single time you pay? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like if you're doing like two three days in a row, does it start like? Are you just constantly on a high or something? Because of that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that must be great. No, the good thing is that, I mean, the security can't touch you when it gets to that level, you know. I mean, everyone's always scared about smoking. Like, but, but what can they do? People smoke with weed. What are they going to do? Yeah, and what do they do with that weed? If they were to confiscate it and go through every single guy, yeah. it would be insane. Yeah. Just going to try weed mountain. If you burnt it, then, well... Yeah. <laughs> Defeats the point, really. <laughs> um, I was, I've been meaning to ask this um, for years now. I saw you guys a few years ago, and you had like a, a black and white movie in the background, and it was like a vampire thing of like these. I think it was like some BDSM vampire skit, and you guys had edited it. What was it? What was that film? Um, two years ago. I was to... Where was it? I think. It, I can't actually remember. <laughs> it, it was a festival or something. But it was um, it was back when you you had the basis was covered in tattoos. Oh right. I don't know what it was. Trying to think, a couple it could have been. Um, it'd be weird things sometimes. It might be Doctor All or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll Google it. <laughs> yeah, I tried the internet and no one knows, so no. I'll try again. But some of the times they're so bad quality, they're not like black and white. I mean, it might be. Oh, do you edit them yourself? Yeah, yeah. Who, like, That's do you stuff. do it or do you all do it together? Pretty much, yeah, put it together ourselves. So we work with some of the guys that like to walk with a few years ago to sort of put it all together. Yeah. And uh, we try to mix it up some of the lights and things as well. Do you do it like specifically in time of your music as well? Well, we it, you know, within reason. <laughs> we try to get them with each song. I mean, if you're playing live, you can't do that. That's to, true. You know, totally insane. Yeah, I remember at Damnation, like, one of your strings broke and you had to yeah. run off for like five minutes. And everyone was like, I don't remember this bit in the song. <laughs> I, like, I like my, my pit stop change. I, like to, I can do it in like a minute, 30 seconds. All right, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I hear you're releasing a new album. What's it called? That's called Time to Die. Okay. Is it going to be like similar to your last albums? What's um, it? I mean, it's always hard for us to say, isn't it? I, yeah. I think I like it's the total like you know revolution in music. Oh, really? And everyone will be like, oh, it sounds you know the same as <laughs> Wizard. I'm assuming your influences will be the same, yeah. but like yeah, a little yeah. bit different. Are you still going to have like a heavy Lovecraft element or? Oh, um, Mr. Dead, this album goes beyond all that, I think. I mean, to, to try to get right into... I mean, there's a lot of but it's, it's in spirit more than, like, you know, just name-dropping, certainly. So, is there a particular theme? I'm um, with... Death. Yeah. Death? I, I don't death. miss that much. <laughs> it's a death album, yeah. A death album. Not like Death Who Played Last Night album. No, no. no, like, no. You know, they're okay. like simple themes. You know, the last one was The, the Black Mass, and then The Witch Girl. This one's... This was just death. Yeah. The end. Everything's over. When you chose to play, um, to name your song Venus and Furs, I honestly thought that was a Velvet Underground cover. Like, did you, did you think about that? Like, when you were creating it, were you trying to like evoke the whole? Um, like, well, I mean, I know, everyone knows what the term means, and they know the term from, from um, One Velvet sample. Underground. So it was to evoke the feeling immediately. Okay, cool. Not having to explain the means. I mean, I was referencing the book in the film. I think with the reference to the song, they know that it's exactly the same. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, um, so I was going to ask, because like, um, there's a lot of, of Lovecraft in your work, what else is there? Because that's what most people are drawn to about Wizard, but like, what else is jumbling around in your... Uh... I mean, that's just the beginning. <laughs> I think it's so much more complex. I mean, lyrically, Musically, with you know, it's, it comes back. Lyrically, I try to write subconsciously, so a lot of it just bubbles up. You know, okay. All the writers I've read over the years, Lovecraft is quite predominant because it was a big part of my life. I think For many years I was reading Lovecraft and almost having, you know, being obsessed with it, weird dreams and stuff. And people 
<laughs> really getting taste for love. Um, loads of weird influences bubble the surface really when you're really in there. And we don't want to be ever really blatant about what, what we're trying to get achieved. Okay. I mean, maybe we don't know really. It's just, I think Lovecraft did sometimes just trying to get that feeling that Yeah, that's why it's not so descriptive. Just... Like when he tries to describe his monsters, he doesn't say exactly what they're like. Yeah, he always yeah. he was always nameless or undescribable. Exactly. So that's I mean yeah. that's maybe what we're trying to do is just people can fill in the gaps themselves and like, hopefully misleading them. That's pretty cool. That's what I like. Can do it. Yeah, it's kind of it's like the sublime really. Like you don't want to put a, an exact description on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what else are you reading? I'm not reading. I haven't hardly read anything in the last few years, have I? I'm too busy. I started reading trash. Trash? <laughs> <laughs> like old novels, you know, real pop novel stuff. I read like for the old sci fi stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Because I like, can sit there in the deck chairs. Like, Do you read it on tour and stuff? Is it just right. easier? Is it easier to take on tour? Yeah, yeah. Has it more people than bracket and anything like that? That's all. That's all. So I guess you might be hearing that in uh, your new album, perhaps? <laughs> there isn't much difference, but you're making it subconscious. <laughs> That's pretty cool. What about you? Do you like, how do you contribute your influences? Influences, musically. Well, everything. I mean, every day we wake up and discuss all the things that we're influenced by and then we put it into the band. So it has visual or musical. So when it comes to rehearsals and your writing, like who who pitches in first, or is it different every time? Well, at home we just you know we start writing riffs, and then we work together. Yeah, and then, and then go, it goes okay, around the riff, and then we okay. get into the jam room and then we perform it. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. I mean, it all starts. It all starts around the riff. Basically. Yeah, we work on getting at those home. those those just the riffs. I mean, once you've got three or four together, and you know when you've got them, if you're just playing them together, and you know they're good already. And you start bringing the band in, right? Yeah. Right. It's not too a deliberate process, really. I mean, you just write a song and you hope, and it won't sound good. I mean, you know, this is working, it sounds like shit. You just want to feel it out. I mean, yeah, that's the best way. There's any rules, really. Do you ever find it hard to get rid of certain riffs? Like, do you ever get riffs that just keep coming back and back and yeah. back again? Yeah, there's yeah. one on this album. Oh. Yeah. You kept trying to kill that riff. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's an amazing riff, it must live. It's your dope smoker. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. I'm being told to wrap it up, so one last question. Um, is there a question that you really wish someone would ask you? Anything, any question you could be asked, ever? Nothing. Do you need six ounces of meat?